So, um, yeah, so I'm Tony Mullen, and uh, I'm very, very pleased to be here. Uh, actually, ever since I started working on this project, I've been kind of scheming on how I can use it to give myself an excuse to come here. So you're looking at my ticket to the conference here. Um, so thanks very much to uh, Tone and Angela and the organizers for uh, having me. Um, so as you can see, I'm going to be talking about uh, the book that I've basically all but completed, uh, Introducing Character Animation with Blender. And I'll just be giving sort of an overview of what is in that book, um, and hopefully taking some questions and comments, and there's still a little bit of time. I'm basically in a stage of doing final edits. Um, I'm getting edits back from the uh, technical editors and the editors. And so there's a little bit of a window of uh, possibilities that I could actually take some comments on board and use them. So uh, I'd like to hear what people think. So uh, I'm going to start by talking just a very little bit about myself uh, and then uh, a little bit about the book. And since I have this great platform to talk to people, I'm just going to give a few of my own general thoughts about Blender-related publishing and sort of try to encourage people to do it. Um, and then I'm going to give a sort of a, as, as, as in-depth as I can in the, in the time, a preview of the book. Okay, so I am a college lecturer in computer science at uh, Tsuda College in Tokyo, uh, where I teach, uh, well, a lot of different computer science related courses, but among them I teach some courses in Blender and courses in Python. Um, actually, uh, the, very, the very first time I came across Blender, I was, I was in the middle of looking for a, a good Python uh, integrated development environment, and I stumbled upon Blender. So that's how I discovered Blender in the first place. Um, I have worked in the past as a cartoonist, an illustrator, a graphic designer. I don't mention programmer, but also programmer. Um, and I am also sort of as a hobby, but a very expensive hobby, an independent filmmaker and animator, um, both in stop motion and in CG. Um, and well, obviously, since I'm here talking about a book I've written, I'm also a writer, and I've written a variety of different kinds of things. OK, so the book is called uh, Introducing Character Animation with Blender, and it's going to be published by Cybex, which is a, an imprint of Wiley. And most of you probably know Cybex. They're very well known in uh, uh, 3D CG publishing. They do a lot of publishing of uh, Maya books and of I think they do 3D Studio Max as well, and a bunch of different uh, CG-related publications. Um, so uh, the title is Character Animation, but I actually take a much broader view of the subject. Um, so it really could maybe better be thought of as uh, character creation and animation. Um, and the reason I sort of went that way is because really there's no other books quite uh, covering a similar field, and I wanted to kind of keep it as broad and useful as possible. So I also cover modeling and texturing and rigging and skinning in addition to animation. And then there's a section of the book which is a study of Blender and actual animation productions. Um, the length of the book is about 450 pages, give or take, I don't know, 20 or 30. And it's got a, it's black and white with a uh, very nice color gallery. I'm really, really very grateful to the artists who have submitted work. Um, actually, you saw the front cover there a moment back. You'll see it again, and that's uh, Mauro Bonecci's work, and he's here uh, today, so uh, thank you to Mauro. Um, this background here is Tomohiro uh, Akutsu, A Atsuku, and uh, I just thought it was kind of cool. It's a nice tune shading anime image, so it's in the background of all my slides. Um, the book is Blender Foundation endorsed. Um, it's got a little Blender logo up in the corner. It will have forwards, uh, I misspelled forwards, um, by Tone Rosendahl and Bassam Kurdali. Uh, technical editing has been done by Roland Hess and Bassam Kurdali. So those guys, Roland Hess, I don't know, uh, he's the, uh, he wrote the Blender People. He's done some, uh, some coding for Blender. He wrote the Blender People plugin. He's very active in the uh, Blender community. Uh, so these guys have been giving me just really incredibly good uh, technical feedback and really raising the level of this book, and I'm really excited about it. Okay, so why did I write a book? 
Well, it's not really that complicated. I, I wanted one, and there wasn't one. So I thought, maybe I should write one. Um, at the time that I decided to write the book, and I'd begun to, um, to pitch the idea to some publishers, uh, the summer of documentation had not yet been announced. So even if it had, I probably still would have gone ahead with this because it wasn't intended to be a book. At least, I don't know, maybe, maybe they will put it out as a book. I'm kind of still hoping because I'd really like a book. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, the great stuff in the summer of documentation. But at the time, there was nothing like that, and, and I really thought there was a, a, a dearth of uh, documentation, the kind of stuff that I wanted. Um, so really, finally, it just wound up being a great excuse for me to spend a lot of time doing Blender stuff. Uh, and so I went ahead and tried that. Um, the book is aimed at uh, basically sort of three broad groups. Um, people who know Blender, but not really animation. Uh, people who know animation, but maybe with other software aside from Blender. And then I think pretty highly motivated newbies to both. I think that you can sort of start from nothing with this book, but you really have to pay attention because it's, um, it's not all the simplest stuff in the world. Um, and I think it should complement the, uh, the Summer of Documentation material, especially the introduction to character animation in the Summer of Documentation because I think that gives a very, very good sort of basic level introduction and there is some overlap, obviously, in the material, but there's also an, a lot of different uh, uh, coverage. So uh, in the book, I actually recommend the Summer of Documentation stuff as well. So uh, I think that writing books like this actually can benefit the Blender community and the Blender uh, development in a number of ways. Um, it's possible that there could be direct financial benefits for the Blender Foundation itself. Um, this depends on a lot of things. They could, uh, Tone could decide to sell it through the Blender shop and you know, make money as a vendor of uh, the book, this book or other books. I'm speaking in general now. Um, oh, oh, there's a lot of different kinds of relationships that the Blender Foundation can have with a, a, a book published by a third party. Um, so that's one possible very direct benefit that could um, be the case. Um, but more indirect benefits, there's, there's a lot of more indirect benefits. Um, I think high profile, especially high profile publications, raise the awareness of Blender in the industry and among the public. Um, so for one thing, you've got, like in the case of Cybex, you've got a professional you know, marketing uh, department and promotional support that's really um, you know, uh, quite quite a significant thing, and you also just have the the sort of general respect, uh, the credibility uh, that you get co that comes along with being uh, published by a, um, a respected publisher in the field. So I think that that this could be a really nice nice boost for Blender. Uh, not that Blender, in my opinion, needs a boost in terms of how good the software actually is, but um, as Tom was saying before, there's a lot of uh, a lot of sort of still uh, I think uh, underestimation of uh, of Blender, and so every little bit uh, of uh, added credibility I think is a good thing. And of course, the more people that you know can learn Blender, then the more high quality Blender work uh, we'll start to see and or we'll continue to see, and that's I think a nice feedback loop. Um, and then finally, it increases Blender's potential to be the basis of profitable profitable work in several ways. I mean, as a, as, as a writer writing the book, I make the money off of the, uh, the royalties of the book. The people in Cybex are all working on this stuff. And so around Blender becomes a little bit of a, you know, an industry. Um, and uh, the more that can happen, the more that that can feed back into Blender's development and people can be, you know, making money working with Blender or around Blender, uh, I think that's, that's good in general. So uh, I'd like to see other books come out as well. And there's a lot of people in this room that know an awful lot about Blender. So uh, I'd like to see maybe some of you guys write books as well. Um, there's a great deal of potential, I think, um, at least in terms of subject matter, 
Uh, there's a great deal of potential in Blender-related publishing. Um, if you just take a look at any uh, CG bookshelf in a bookstore, you'll see that the other CG packages have just stacks and stacks of books. And it's all because they've got so much functionality and so many different things to talk about that there's plenty of, plenty of room for uh, publishing. And I think there's already uh, enough demand to support at least some of these things. And so, uh, and as these books sort of start to sell, then there will be an increase of demand as well. Um, and learning styles do vary, and some people are better at learning one way or better at learning another way, but there uh, are still an awful lot of people that do like to have a book. Um, and also, a book allows focus on areas which uh, require, I think, deeper attention then it's easy to give in, in sort of small uh, tutorials. Uh, I mean, I learned everything I know about Blender from online tutorials, and so I think they're really great. And I love video tutorials as well. Um, but it also requires that you do an awful lot of sort of cobbling things together and finding lots of different small tutorials and sort of putting it together in your head. Whereas a book can kind of do that for you and, and give you a little bit of a big picture. So just to kind of fire your imaginations, I thought about what some other books on my fantasy blender bookshelf might look like. Um, I'd like to have, I'd like to put rendering and ray tracing with blender, yafra, and indigo on my, on my uh, wish list on Amazon. Um, or advanced compositing and video effects with blender. Or mastering blender Python scripting and source development. Or creating games and interactive content with blender. These are all books that I think would would sell, and none of them exist. So, and I'm not going to write them all. So, somebody please, <laughs> somebody please get going on it. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of challenges with um, with writing about Blender that I think are a little different than maybe if you're writing about some proprietary application. Everybody knows, and I think uh, Tone kind of re referred to it earlier as well. Um, you get. Blender just has, has, has really developed very rapidly. And especially, probably, uh, a good chunk of the people in here are mainly working with the CVS version anyway. So like even, even, even w when it's not actually um, versioning, or release, even when releases aren't coming out, people are still ahead of the curve uh, often. And so it's a real, the, the community is, you know, if you go into Blender Artist Forum, you see a lot of, a lot of people talking about things that aren't even quite released yet. Um, and so it's really kind of tricky to keep documentation up to date. Um, and with a book, the, 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 the speed of publication is just quite slow sometimes. So there are trade-offs which may be necessary um, in terms of whether you're going to delay the book to, catch, to let the release come out and keep it up to date or, or, or have the book be a little bit out of date or, or what. But um, I think that this is okay. For one thing, mostly the fundamentals don't, fundamentals don't change that fast. And I kind of knew where I was when I started with the character animation. I knew that there had been a lot of important developments in character animation and armature animation that were very recent. And those weren't liable to change suddenly. Um, so the stuff that I cover is going to maintain fairly stable for a while. Um, and yeah, okay, so there's, there's pros and cons of basically uh, having online documentations and also offline documentations. Um, and in, in both cases, it's, it's difficult to kind of keep up. But um, one of the things I noticed that when I was writing, it, wasn't, it, was, it was actually okay for me to sort of predict things. And I knew some of the things that were going to be coming down the pipeline, so I kind of... Uh, I kind of, in the book, I kind of say, okay, well, I'm not covering, for example, sculpt mode, but it's coming. So I think people that read the book will be able to kind of like not be so shocked when they see a sculpt mode because they all already kind of know that it's on its way. Um, okay, so now I'm going to give a little bit of a, get to some pictures here. Um, well, not yet. Uh, here's the table of contents. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm doing on time, so I think maybe I won't read it all out to you. But the first part is basically creating a character. Um, and I begin with uh, a look at the interface and uh, some of the basics of using Blender. Uh, the second part is goes into animation. The third part talks about actual Blender productions. And then the fourth part, which 
is almost not really a part at all. It's just a couple of chapters about other software and further resources for learning. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to cover all of what I thought were the necessary topics for character animation. And to do that with a sort of a practical, hands-on, tutorial-based approach, but at a more leisurely pace and hopefully more in-depth than with online tutorials. Um, and I also wanted to try to include as many suggestions and shortcuts and secrets and little tricks as I could stuff in as I did as I, uh, along the way. Um, and then I also wanted to try to explain why I made certain choices and what kind of the alternatives were, would be um, that, I, that I may not have gone into in, in depth. So a lot of the book centers around uh, creating and animating a single character whose name is Captain Blender, who I'll introduce you to shortly. Um, and the book can be followed in a couple of ways. The most intensive way to do it would be to start with a cube and go all the way to the end of the, uh, the book, uh, doing all the tutor tutorials in, in sequence. And that's probably a pretty demanding way to go about it. Um, but the DVD will also include uh, blend files to get you to the right stage to start at basically each different chapter. Um, and so you can pretty much jump in anywhere and with the appropriate blend file you'll be able to follow the tutorials um, from that point, which probably would be a bit less intensive. Um, so the first chapter deals with interface and objects. Um, I give an overview of the Blender interface, windows, hotkeys, 3D navigation, etc. And uh, just a very kind of brief uh, introduction to objects and data blocks, misspelled data blocks, um, and I kind of show people the difference between a mesh uh, object and a mesh data block, for example, um, because I think this is important. I think it's kind of a subtle point that kind of gets lost on, on newbies, but it's not really that complicated. It's just good to know. So that's the first chapter. I get that stuff out of the way. Um, and then the second chapter I go into working with meshes and I give an overview of meshes and modifiers uh, and I do some uh, tutorials, a step-by-step -step extrusion modeling of a female face and then we start box modeling the Captain Blender character and then I go into a few common problems uh, that, that beginners often face with mesh modeling. So here's the, the first tutorial, a little bit of images from the first tutorial on mesh modeling human face and there you can see um, an example of uh, just modifier ordering, whether you've got the subsurf modifier or the mirror modifier first, um, and then the extrusion modeling uh, image. And then here's, here's Captain Blender. Here's the very beginning of um, the character that's going to basically haunt you throughout the book. Um, and as you can see, I start with a drawing, and I've got some images up here of s steps along the way to creating this basic mesh of the character. Um, and then here's some, here's some little problems, which I'm sure everybody in here is familiar with, and probably everybody knows the solution to. They're all simple problems, but they're all very common for beginners, so I include a little bit of a section on these. Um, then I go into materials and textures in the next chapter, and basically start dressing Captain Blender up. I give him a suit, texture, and materials, UV mapping for his head, uh, bump mapping, going to bump mapping, going to particle hair, eyelashes, a weight painting for the hair control to get his hair the right length. Actually, I don't mention this, but I've also got curve guides in there. Um, and then how to make eyeballs using procedural textures. So here's some images from that chapter. As you can see, we've got uh, his, uh, his suit has materials and the eyeball use procedural textures. Um, there's an image of his eyelashes. Um, which uses a, just a mapped texture onto a, onto a couple of planes. And um, uh, just the way I've got his, his, uh, a separate mesh inside his head for hair. I talk about UV mapping. You can't see the image in the lower right, but that's got the weight painting for the hairstyle. Um, okay, then the next chapter goes into rigging um, and begins to look at how um, armatures work. F, uh, f forward kinetics and inverse kinetics. Um, uh, I use a very simple uh, sort of uh, figure and, and, uh, to, to give the basics of armatures. And then we begin to rig the Captain Blender um, model with uh, a complete armature which is based, uh, slightly adapted, 
uh, slightly modified, but based very closely on the Ludwig rig, rig by Jason Pierce, which many people are probably familiar with. And there's also uh, a fair amount of, uh, I, a fair number of ideas borrowed from Bassam Kridali's uh, Man Candy rig. So some of these sort of well-known uh, blender rigs, I've just kind of uh, adapted to the to, to suit Captain Blender. Um, so then I go into skinning and weight painting, um, and well, at present, at present things are organized to include action constraints. Uh, at, at this point, there's been some some discussion about ordering things, but we'll take care of that. Um, so. Here's some images from that chapter. Um, this uh, figure on the left is kind of a very simple figure just to demonstrate how, how armatures work. And then you see some images showing weight painting and some of the images showing, like, for example, stretch bones and, and envelopes and, uh, and that kind of thing. So uh, that's the rigging chapter. Um, then I go into shape keys and facial rigging in the next chapter. Um, I give, again, a very simple introduction to bone-driven shape keys on a cube. Just use a cube and kind of f put some shapes on the cube and drive them with some bones. Um, then I go into facial rigging, uh, again, with bone-driven shapes. Um, and I use, uh, show how to use vertex groups to create asymmetry. Um, and then I go into more detail about the uh, 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 using, using armature, armature uh, rigging for the eyes and tongues and, and things like that. Now, of course, there's many different ways to rig a face, uh, and, and I mention that, I cover that, but I don't really use them all. Um, uh, I, so mostly, mostly the face is, is uses uh, bone-driven shape keys. Uh, and then I also go into a little bit of how, about how to improve joint deformations with driven shape keys. So here's some images from that. As you can see in the upper left, that's um, the, the simple example with a cube and a, a driven shape. Um, I've got some examples of, uh, of having his, uh, controlling his gaze, the direction he looks with a bone, uh, with custom bone shapes, uh, showing the asymmetrical uh, uh, weight painting, the asymmetrical uh, vertex groups, and then the lower right, uh, well, in the middle there is the a driven, some driven shapes for facial expressions, and then the lower right is, uh, you can't really see how bad that left shoulder looked before I used driven shapes, but it looks pretty good there, so that's using a, a bone-driven shape to fix a joint deformation. Um, okay, then I move into the second section of the book, second part of the book, which is about uh, animation. And I start with the very basics of what keyframes are and what IPOs do, or IPOs, and uh, uh, how to make a ball bounce uh, in just the most rudimentary possible way using, using uh, those things. Okay, uh, and then I move on to armature animation. And I talk about posing and keying poses. Again, I talk about IK versus FK posing in terms of actually um, making the poses and uh, how those methods of posing differ and result in differing uh, animation, differing motion. So I talk about arcs and curves and about how, you know, when you, when you want uh, an arm to arc, you, you need to use FK posing, or, or at least you should use FK posing and why that is. Um, then we go into a single jump action where I just have Captain Blender jumping up and down over and over again. And I talk a little bit about the sort of um, animation concepts of like line of action and exaggeration and squash and stretch and some of that stuff. Uh, then I describe a walk cycle, show how to create a walk cycle and a run cycle. And I talk a little bit about the distinction between, for example, pose to pose and straight ahead uh, methods. Um, and use uh, a combination approach to uh, show one way of making the character walk forward, using the walk cycle as an example of pose to pose, and then using a straight ahead method to incorporate uh, in, into that to make the character move around. Um, and then I've got another example of pose to pose gesturing matched with sound. So here's a couple of images from that, um, from that chapter. Just 
a couple of images of Captain Blender running there in the foreground and then some walk cycle images in the background. And here I've got an, a, an example of him jumping up and down and showing the, the line of action uh, of, of that movement. Um, so then I uh, have a chapter on lip sync and facial animation, um, show how to create facial expressions with facial armature posing, show how to do lip syncing to a sound file. I've got some images from that chapter there, showing various expressions and then showing how to use the, uh, the, uh, f the facial armature with those custom bones to have him lip sync along with this wave file we've, I've got. Okay, so then uh, I don't have any pictures for the nonlinear animation section, but I, I have a lot nonlinear animation chapter, um, which tells how to do nonlinear animation. Um, and then I go on to some other issues in animation which I hadn't managed to, ca to, to, to address up, until up to that point, um, which aren't maybe quite as pressing or are uh, kind of obscure. I talk about lattices, which at present are not uh, quite as straightforward to animate as, for example, ordinary meshes. Um, I talk about soft body simulation. And I talk a little bit about, about metaballs just, just for fun. And then I talk about interacting with props. Um, so there's what you can do with lattices, some subtle facial expressions you can get using lattices. I describe how to do that kind of thing. I describe how to use soft body simulations to give Captain Blender a little bit of a punch and I show how to get that to jiggle as he exercises. Um, and then I, I just kind of really just sort of for fun talk about some of the things you can do with meta balls and some of the things you know that are not not at all related to Captain Blender but using sort of other techniques that more, more just to kind of give people ideas of the possibilities and kind of get people thinking outside of the box a little bit. So using metaballs by bone parenting, just direct bone parenting. Um, and I also talk about, I think this is a little out of order actually, I think I do the props before I do these uh, other issues, but um, I also talk about how to do really basic prop interactions like, you know, making sure that his hands stay flat on the, on the surface when he moves around, showing how to make him able to pick up and throw a ball. Um, and I talk a little bit, a very little bit about lighting and rendering, just enough to give an overview of what the lights are and what they do. Um, basically, how to render, how to direct it, how to direct your output to the right place, uh, and very basic stuff on how to use the sequence editor. And at present, I don't have anything written about composite nodes, but I'm I'm thinking about maybe including like a page worth of that. Um, and I really don't know. I think that I think that's worthy al also of its own book. So uh, you're not going to get a whole lot on that from this book, but I might I might get a page in there. Or so um, so here's a little bit of some of the graphics from the the discussion about lighting. Uh, here's just well everybody knows what this is. Just a little scene from a uh, from the sequence editor. Um, uh, I, I talk just about like this level of compositing at, at, at the moment. That's that's as much as I talk about. Um, got a little section on using Python scripts. Nothing about doing, nothing about writing in Python, making Python scripts. But I, I cover a lot of the, what I thought were the most uh, useful Python scripts for character animations. So, um, a couple of interesting Python scripts. I just touch on and talk about how to use them. Uh, including bl uh, Blender people, although I don't go into any detail. I include the documentation on the DVD. Um, and Blender people is a quite sophisticated uh, crowd simulation uh, script based on MySQL. So it's a fairly, I think, advanced uh, topic. And I just kind of give people the, the, tell people what it is and where they can, how they can find out how to use it. Um, then I've got uh, the section on Blender in production which um, I'm very grateful to the Orange team and also the uh, Plumiferous people uh, for their help and cooperation, especially to Claudio Andar, who has really helped a lot by providing, some, uh, providing a, a, a very nice uh, rig from Plumiferous. Um, and I, I just, for the Elephant's Dream chapter, I look at the Elephant's Dream files and I just kind of try to uh, 
look at some interesting places where they do things differently than I describe in the book and look at some interesting examples of uh, ideas that I've described in the book and sort of just, uh, I mean, I've only, I only have one chapter devoted to this, so it's really very superficial and quick description given the massive amount of material available. Uh, but I, I just kind of look at it. And I also give people a little bit of a hint and suggestions as to how best to go about looking at this stuff um, because it's, it can be a little intimidating when you first, when you first try opening up those source files. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I got from Claudio Andauer this terrific, really, really fun rig to play with. And so I describe, um, I describe to the best I can uh, the Fifi rig, and he's helped me out a lot in understanding how this works. And it's really clever little rig. So um, I have a chapter devoted to mo mostly just for inspiration, just to give people ideas of how, how differently you can go about rigging a character. Um, <coughs> So, uh, in conclusion, I, I really would hope to see, for one thing, more people become encouraged to write about Blender or produce other educational materials. I just heard a rumor about a, a DVD coming out, which I think is great. Um, but, you know, the more people can sort of uh, produce those kind of materials, I think the better. Uh, I also hope that the book, this book will help people learn about character animation and creation uh, and to produce high quality work and all of that together I hope will help to uh, continue to uh, r raise Blender's profile in the CG world. So thank you very much and very special thanks to these people that I list who contributed artwork that I used in this, uh, in this presentation. So thank you very much. I would like to thank you too, because um, he's making actually the first uh, more specialist uh, Blender book, apart from the game kit. But what I'm extremely happy about is that this came all from an external publisher. So uh, I didn't have to do anything. Well, I had to, uh, I'm going to write a forward, uh, say some thank you with the book, but that's all we need. And that's a really good sign. And when we were on Seagraph, I was contacted by two more publishers, uh, both Addison Wesley and Pete Spit, Pete Spit, I think it's called. They are interested. No Starts is still interested. So anyone who feels like the challenge of writing a book, like his wish list uh, was, a, was a very good uh, uh, example of four or five books we could use. If you have a concept, if you have ideas, if you have the writing skills, I mean, don't mind, uh, contact, contact me, I can help you get into contact with publishers as well. Or the Blender Foundation can also publish books themselves. Like we are going to publish a Blender Basics guide. I'm still, I have to talk with the owners guys during the next two days because we might make an elephant's dream book, more like a, an art tutorial book where all the secret tricks we used to them in the movie uh, are going to be shown. And there's a need for a Python book, the Python API. That's uh, the things that might go on. Okay, I'll give it back to you. Thank you. So, any, any questions? Sorry? No, yeah, well, um, <laughs> um, uh, the, the publication date on the book is at present March 17th, I think, which seems, seems late to me also, uh, and I'm not exactly sure why it, it takes so long, but I don't really know anything about publishing, so uh, I leave it up to them. Uh, it's, uh, t to be fair, it's actually, that's not the delay. The forward is not the delay right now, because I'm actually still returning um, uh, edits. I'm getting edits back um, on the chapters I've completed. I've, I've completed the whole manuscript, but I get these chapters back that have been edited and te technical edited, and so I'm still returning those. I mean, they're, they're coming to me, and Basically, the process of writing the book is still going on. Um, so, and, and it's, that's a pretty time-consuming process. Even after I've written the whole thing and sent it all to them and they're all happy, um, there's still a lot of actual writing stuff that needs to change. They, they come back and they say, well, this, this uh, 
uh, tutorial is confusing here. Can you redo these graphics? Can you go back and do this and that? And I got to do that, and then they got to check that. So it takes a lot of time to get that fixed up. So that's, a, that's at least part of what, what happens. And then I think once they got all the con content, then it goes to be composited and to be designed and laid out and everything. And that's another time consuming thing. And, and, I'm, I'm, and then I guess they gear up the promotional machine and get things going. So I, I, I don't know. It's, it's at present, it's, it's March, which uh, I'm looking forward to. But uh, yeah. OK. Any other questions? OK. Uh, are you uh, happy with the fact that there are only two releases a year instead of one each month? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's, it's, I, I, I'm happy, however, because I like it when it goes fast. Um, as a Blender user uh, who's using CVS um, stuff, uh, I'm always happy when things get, get moving. Uh, so yeah, that was one of the sort of points is that it's kind of, uh, well, one of the things with the book is that the, DV comes, the DVD comes with it and that has the version on it which is covered by the book. So if you buy the book, that's the one that it's, it's going to be lined up with. Uh, and if you're kind of a, a pioneer and you want to go download the latest version, then you sh should be able to kind of link things up. And I give, uh, I give some suggestions to, to how I think people should think about that, you know what I mean? And kind of like be prepared to kind of think forward and be prepared to look on Blender Artists Forum and so forth and ask people, so um, where's the subsurf button, you know, stuff like that, um, which, uh, or maybe don't ask, maybe just look at the FAQ, but um, just kind of give people a guide to how to think about a fast, a quickly upgrading uh, software package like this. Any other questions? Uh, 2.42. Yeah, 2.42. If, if 2.43 comes out in December, I don't think there's any chance of... of I mean, 2.42, uh, but like I said, I make a lot of references to what I know to be in immediate development. You know, so like what I know is coming up, I, I refer to explicitly, and I say, uh, well, actually, I mentioned the Python script for uh, for sculpt sculpting script, and I say when describing that Python script that the actual sculpt mode is going to be uh, incorporated in, in in soon. So be on the lookout for that. So there's a lot of places where I kind of give people a heads up for near near future releases. Anything else? In some places, there were areas where I kind of had initially written, this will behave in this way, and I kind of cut a few sentences just to sort of let things go. Uh, it'd be a little bit more, uh, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember an exact instance. I, I, at, one point I was, at, at one point, I was working with the, the, the action editor and the, and the I think I finally got the issue sorted out. I got onto um, uh, to to the the forum and um, started talking to people and and well, and this is a bit of a technical a technical thing. But uh, no, you know, I I think I maintained that kind of list in my head. I didn't. I don't think I, I didn't write any. Uh, well, I, I maintained a list of notes 
that I wanted to go back and fix or something like that, but not specifically software related. Actually, I mean, for, for what I was doing, for the area in which I was working, um, I didn't run across too many glitches or confusing points. Um, th there were some, but they got sorted out. And, uh, you know, I asked a few difficult questions, uh, but mostly, mostly there weren't, wasn't too much problem. And, and of course, like I said, I mean, uh, one of the things I was working with was like mainly a lot with the armature system, which is, was just finished being sort of overhauled, you know what I mean? So it was kind of recent, you know, very nice uh, code, and I, I didn't really have to worry about that changing fast in the next release or so. So, okay. Okay, thank you very much.